So let's start from the beginning here. We're going to start with our exponential function. So we talked about recognizing them, recognizing the exponential versus the logarithmic. Exponentials literally have exponents, like that x plus 3 is an exponent up on top. If you see exponents, we've got an exponential function. Also, if you're lacking the word log, that means it's not a logarithmic function, and it is, in fact, an exponential function. So I want you guys to make sure that you have these memorized now, if you did not have them memorized before. We've got these three original points. Okay, so those three original points, make sure you've got them memorized, all right? And if you think about the way that they kind of fit in, if you had like a base raised to a power, if you plug in this as the power, the base raised to the negative first power would be the reciprocal. The base raised to the zero power would be one. And the base raised to the first power would be b. So that's where these three original points come from. It's from plugging these in as exponents and seeing what you could get out. Okay, so we have those three points memorized. You guys are good on that. Second issue with the test on Monday came with actually recognizing what number the base was. What up here is the base? The one-fifth. One just the one-fifth. The four is part of a transformation that will happen in your second step. So just this one-fifth is the base. If you're confused, it's just whatever the exponent is attached to. This x plus three is directly attached to the one-fifth. It's not attached to the four. The four comes as part of your transformation step. So we use the one-fifth as our base. So here are our new points. We got negative one with the reciprocal of the base. If it's already a fraction, flip the fraction. It turns into a whole number. We always have zero, one. And then we've got one, five. I'm sorry, one, one-fifth. One and one-fifth. Okay, so those are my, we call those the parent functions, kind of the original points before any transformations are made. Any issues with those? Just kind of plugging in our base to this formula right here. So now we've got three different transformations that are happening. With exponential functions, the only thing that affects x is whatever you have up there in that exponent. And remember, with every type of function we've ever transformed, x always does the opposite. So if you see x plus 3, what are you doing to your x values? Minus 3. Good. So I'm subtracting 3 from all of my x values. So this becomes negative 4 negative three and negative two. So really what's happening is you're taking, the whole graph is just shifting, shifting three units to the left. So it used to be kind of centered around zero, and then every point just gets pushed over three units. Okay, so then the four and the minus one, what we do with that is this is called a vertical stretch. It's gonna stretch out all your y values, make them taller. And then minus one is called the vertical shift. It's gonna push the whole graph down one unit. So y does what it looks like it's going to do. x does the opposite, y does the same. So these, we take these y values, first multiply them by 4, and then subtract 1. Think order of operations. Multiplication, then subtraction. So 5 times 4 is 20. Minus 1 is 19. I think the 19 freaks some people out because it seemed bigger than ones that we have seen. But you were doing it right, I promise. 1 times 4 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. And then 1 fifth times 4 is 4 fifths minus 1 leaves us with negative 1 fifth or negative 0.2 if you just plugged it in. Doesn't matter. You're going to get the same number when you plot it. So those are your three points. Any issues with the transformations and where these points came from? No? Okay. So we go to graph. So you're going to set up your coordinate system. Now here's a very important feature of your graph that a lot of you guys are missing. It's that dotted horizontal line that we call an asymptote. Line is very important, two reasons. First reason, it's gonna help you guide your graph and make sure it actually looks the way it's supposed to look, it takes on the right shape and everything. Two, it's gonna help you with your range. You'll see once we actually get it in front of us, when you see that dotted line, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense when we talk about the range. So normally, in a default graph without transformations, that line would be just right here on the x-axis, right through zero. If there's any sort of movement up or down, that dotted line is gonna go with it. So did our graph get shifted up or down at all, according to my equation up here? Yes. Down. down one. So when my graph gets shifted down one unit, that dotted line goes with it. So the dotted line is going down one unit. So again, that's going to guide my graph, kind of provide a boundary for where my graph can and can't go. Okay, so now I have three points to plot. I'm going to just guess the 19 would be like up here. So just go with it. Oh, there we go. Just put it way up there. And then negative 3, 3, like right there. And then negative 2, negative 1 fifth. 
The negative one fifth, when you have fractions like that, just kind of estimate, it's gonna be a little bit lower than the x-axis. So the reason we have this dotted line here, I saw a lot of people that went through these points and then like kept going lower. You don't keep going lower. You kind of do like a sharp turn here and just drag right along that dotted line. That's why we have it there. So we're gonna go through these points, kind of a sharp turn here and it just goes pretty much horizontal for the rest of its time. So it should look like that, okay? Questions on the graph itself? Domain? All reals. all reals, good. Exponential functions are always all reals. That means in terms of x values, you can plug in any x values that you want. There are no restrictions. So domain is all reals. So now the range is always what y values we're looking at. So this dotted line, like I said, kind of provides a boundary line for us. You're not going to go below that line. None of these y values down here are covered. So using that dotted line as a guide, what is our range going to be? Greater than that negative one. Good. For the most part, it's going to be greater than, and it's always going to be this number right here that goes in our range. What is the one scenario in which you would have a less than for the range? If there was a negative four. If there was a negative four, it would flip the whole thing upside down. That's the only time that you would have a negative or a less than, I mean. Okay, on the graph? Okay, so let's look at this one. Number two, you've got this common base. This is a 7-2 problem. So... With this current base of 3 and this current base of 1 ninth, how could they both be rewritten to be the same base? What would that base be? Base of 3. Base of three. This already is a base of 3, and this can be written as a base of 3. If this was like 27, for instance, I could still write them both as a base 3. So you might encounter a situation where neither one of them are the base you want, but you can write them both as the same base. Okay, so this is just 3 to the first, so I'm not going to change it. So I'm going to leave this left-hand piece exactly the way that it is. Now, instead of 1 ninth, I'm going to write my base of 3 because I'm trying to get a common base. It would be 3 to what power? Negative 2. Negative 2. Beautiful. And then I'm keeping, for right now, just keeping that x plus 1 where it is. So now this piece right here, I have an exponent raised to another exponent. So what am I supposed to do up here? Distribute. Distribute. Good. So I'm keeping this the way it is. Couple of mistakes I saw, people not actually distributing the negative two. I saw some people just multiply it by the x and not by the plus one. So be careful with that. So these are my two exponents. This is my goal was to get it to look like this where they have the same base. So think in terms of the way equations work. You guys know an equation means the thing on the left is supposed to be the same as the thing on the right. We already know that they have the same bases. So that must mean what? Must mean what's equal? The insides, the exponents must be equal. I know the bases are equal. It must mean the exponents are equal. And so I can just set up a little equation like this. So just to clarify, math-wise, I'm not dividing by 3. I'm definitely not dividing by 3. Because this isn't multiplication. It's a base in an exponent problem. You're not multiplying anything by 3. And so you're not getting rid of it by dividing. We're actually not getting rid of it at all. We're just recognizing that because the bases are the same, it must mean that the exponents are the same. So no division is happening there. Just recognizing the bases have to be equal to each other. Okay, so now solving for x, we're going to add this 2x to both sides. This would cancel. Add this 2 to both sides. And these actually, both pairs end up canceling. We've got negative 2s on both sides. So this is now an 8x. When everything cancels, 0. zero. This freaks people out, too. What do you get if you divide 0 by 8? Zero. Still 0. 0. So if you plug that 0 back in, 6 times 0 minus 2 would be negative 2, right? So left-hand side would be 3 to the negative second. What is 3 to the negative second? 1 ninth. If I plug the 0 in here, what's 0 plus 1? One? 1. And what's 1 ninth to the first? One ninth. So if I plug the zero in, both sides of the equation are one ninth. So you can check your answer like that. Okay, this one. You guys broke my heart on this one a little bit. Remember when I went through this on Friday and then a bunch of you left it blank? Let's not leave it blank tomorrow. I think we're going to know how to do this problem by tomorrow. So know this equation. I would write that down first, just so you've got it kind of laid out in front of you. So this each of these ordered pairs, this is an x coordinate and this is a y coordinate. So our goal is to find something to replace the a with and something to replace the b with. Your final equation should still have a y and an x written in there, but the a and the b will be replaced. So what you do is you replace the x and the y with these two points first. Okay, so I'm replacing the y with a 5 
and replacing the x with a zero. So b to the zero, what is that? Zero. One. One. one, right? And then what is a times one? A, so I just found A. I figured out that A was equal to 5. So now I know A, and then I have another value of X and another value of Y. So now I'm going to do that all again, but I'm going to plug in my value of A as well. So I'm going to replace Y with 3125. I now can also replace A with 5. I still don't know B, and I'm replacing X with that second X value of 4. Good so far? What happens next? Divide by 5. Good. I saw a lot of subtraction of 5. Be careful with that. Subtraction is the opposite of addition. Division is the opposite of multiplication. So these will cancel. This is 625 equals b to the fourth. Then what? Fourth root both sides. Good. If my exponent was 5, I would fifth root. If my exponent was 6, I would sixth root. And you can plug that right into your calculator. Like this can go right in. But what we're technically trying to find is what multiplies by itself four times to give 625. And what would that number be? 5. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 gives us 625. So that's B. That B is 5. So now your final, final answer would be a new equation with 5 plugged in for A and with 5 plugged in for B. So your answer should look like this. What percent of people got that right? Um, 25. Really? Yeah. All right, this is not 25 to the X. Not 25 to the X. You cannot multiply those numbers out because remember, exponents come before multiplication. So you can't multiply them together. Yeah. All right, next page. This one broke my heart a little bit too because I reminded you guys over and over again to make sure you knew how to convert back and forth between log and exponential. So one thing I want you guys to get in your head is how you would kind of read these forms. Guys, be quiet. This is exponential form. So if you're kind of reading through this in your head, you should think of it as 8 raised to the negative second power equals 1 over 64. When it's in exponential form, it's pretty easy to read. In logarithmic form, you start with the word log. So this reads as log base 8, or if you're reading it as like the power idea, you'd say the power on 8 that gives us 1 over 64 is negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to read those both again, so hopefully that'll stick in your head. 8 raised to the negative second power is equal to 1 over 64. And this reads as the power on 8 that gives us 1 over 64 is negative 2. Okay, so this is converting into log form. That's all I wanted with number 4 was just that as my final answer. Okay, so now we're on to our second graph here. So remember with exponential, what my ordered pairs were for exponential. If you have those memorized, all you're doing for logarithmic is just flipping them. X's become Y's, Y's become X. And that's because when I introduced log functions at the beginning of 7.3, I introduced it as the inverse function of exponentials. And inverse functions, if you guys remember from chapter 6, the X's and Y's just trade places. So my new points are 1 over B, negative 1, 1, 0, and b1. Same three points, but x's became y's, y's became x's. So we'll switch. And that's really the way to think about that, is so like the base part stays the same, but see how these two numbers trade? Here, negative two is like an x value, one over 64 is like a y value, but when I switch to my logarithmic form, one over 64 is like an x value, and negative two is like a y value. So they're swapping when I go from log to exponential. Okay, so these, my base, this was also hard for people to find. What's the base for this one? Three. Three. It's this little subscript down here. That's always your base. I had a lot of fours. Okay, so this one third, negative one, always one zero, and then three one. So those are my original three points before I make any transformations at all. Good on that? Okay, so now we've got two transformations here. Start with this. This is on the inside of my log function. So if you have parentheses like that, that's affecting the x if it's on the inside. And remember with x, again, it always does the opposite of what it looks like it's going to do. So how am I changing my x values? Adding one. Adding one. Good. This whole graph is shifting to the right one unit. Okay, so adding one to all of my x values. So this becomes one and one third. This is two. And this is four. Okay, this four on the outside. That's called the vertical stretch. It's stretching my whole graph out by four, so it's going to get taller. 
What does it do to my y values? Multiply. Multiply by negative four. Good. If there was something on the end here, like a plus something or a minus something, I would multiply by four, then add or subtract that number, just like I did with exponentials. If there was something like on the outside, like if there was like a plus two or something outside parentheses, first you'd multiply by four, then add two, just like we did with the exponentials. Multiply by negative four or positive four? Multiply by four. Yeah, why does what it looks like it's gonna do? Okay, so multiplying all of these by four. So those are my new transformed points. Are you guys ready to graph? Good to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so we set up our coordinate system here. Um, we are supposed to have a dotted line with exponentials. That dotted line is horizontal. With exponentials, it provides a boundary for y's. There is no boundary for x's with exponentials. But with logarithmic, remember they, they kind of swap around. With logarithmic, we're providing a boundary for our x values. But there are no boundaries for your y values with logarithmic. So we're supposed to have a vertical dotted line with these. Okay, the default setting is that that vertical dotted line runs right down this axis here. But if my graph gets shifted to the left or to the right at all, that dotted line is going to go with it. Okay, so because of this shift, what shift was this, by the way? Left, right? Right. How many units? One. This went to the right one unit. It does the opposite of what it looks like it's going to do. So my dotted line goes with it. My dotted line moves one unit to the right. So again, two reasons that we want that line. First, it's going to help us make sure our graph actually looks accurate, looks the way it's supposed to look. Two, it's going to help us this time with our domain. Okay, so we've got that dotted line. Now plot your other three points. Okay, so we have one and one third and then down at negative four. When you have fractions like that, just approximate. Do your best. Two zeros right here and then four, four is right there. So again, the reason we have that dotted line you're going to just skim right along that dotted line. It's going to be pretty much vertical at this point. And then it goes through these points and has like this very slow increase like that. Okay, we need that dotted line there. Otherwise, we don't have the boundary. We might go too far to the left. That's a boundary line. It stops our graph from going any farther than that line. Okay, and that in turn should help us to list our domain. Based on that dotted line, what is our domain? X is greater than 1, and that's exactly where that dotted line is. We say X values are only allowed to be past that line. None of these X values are covered. Nothing smaller than 1 is covered at all. Sarah? So if you just take uh, the opposite number, like with the X. Take the opposite number. Technically, what's happening is recognizing that this thing on the inside has to be positive. So this X minus 1 has to be positive, and if you added 1 to both sides, then you would get X is greater than 1. Brandon, same question, different question? How about the range for logarithmic? All reals. All reals, good. Every single time the range is all reals. Yeah. Um, is this problem where if there's no parentheses around the x minus one, you wouldn't apply it to that? Yes, if there's no, so if this was four log base three of x, and then the minus one was not in parentheses, that would be moving down. So yeah, only if stuff is in parentheses does it affect the x. Otherwise, it's a it's a plus or minus with y. Okay, six got really interesting really quickly. Um, a lot of you made up new properties that weren't real properties. A lot of people kind of like distributed the log function, which isn't a thing. You can't distribute functions. Those are, those are like words, not numbers. You can't distribute functions. Um, it was actually a lot simpler, and I think you guys probably discovered that when you were doing your revisions. This is really similar to the exponential. Remember the one on the front when they both had exponential base 3? So you just set the insides equal to each other? That's exactly what you're doing here. They both have log base 2, and so you're just setting the insides equal to each other. Was that easier than you probably made it? I'm hoping, I'm assuming. So you're just taking this. So again, just to clarify... We're not dividing by anything. We're not like getting rid of the log. You can't divide by log. That's, that's a function. Um, it's also like a word. Like you can't, we don't divide by words. Like it's not, you can divide by the log of something, but you can't just divide by log base two. Log base two without something plugged in is like taking like a square root symbol without anything plugged into it. Like, you couldn't divide by the square root symbol. That's a function without anything plugged into it. So you can't divide by log base 2. It's not, 
it's not a number, it's not even really a full function. So definitely can't do that. All you're doing here is recognizing that because the log base two is the same, it must mean that the insides are equal in order for the equation to actually be valid. So now that this is quadratic, anything quadratic, get everything to one side, we're gonna solve by factoring. So I'm gonna keep this x squared right here. I'm gonna subtract the two x over. And then this two I'm gonna subtract as well, so this will be minus eight. Good so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we solve this by factoring. We've had a lot of practice factoring over the last couple days, so hopefully you guys are good at this. Multiply to negative eight, add to negative two. Good, negative four, positive two. So when you solve these, because these ones you actually are solving, you've got an equal sign. So this gives us x equals four. <coughs> this gives us x equals negative two. Be really careful with log functions. Anything that has restricted domains, you have the possibility of running into extraneous solutions, and one of these is. So make sure that these parts that I circled have to be positive when you plug these values back in. So if I plug four in, four squared minus six, is that positive? Yeah, two times four plus two, is that positive? Yes, yeah. yeah, so this one's fine. If I go to plug in the negative two, negative two squared minus six, is that positive? No, no. no, so this one's extraneous. Keep an eye out for that tomorrow. I mean, log number six is gonna be just a different log base with different stuff on the inside. Keep an eye out for those extraneous solutions. All right, should I like, throw a wink at you guys? Would that make the hint stick? Yeah, yeah. Here you go, so take a look for extraneous solutions, guys on number six tomorrow. Did that help you? <laughs> All right, this one right here. We've got log inequalities. This is seven, four. Um, with log inequalities, the order that you transfer this is very, very important. Guys, be quiet. Pretend for a moment that this was an equation. If this was an equation, you would start with the base and then raise it to the exponent and then set it equal to this right here. Because remember what this means, if this were an equal sign, this means the power on three that gives us x plus three is three. So we'd say the power on three that gives us x plus three is three. Be super careful with this. This three becomes the base. This three becomes the exponent. A lot of threes going on here. Saw a lot of subtracting threes, not a thing either. Saw a lot of like subtracting threes and dividing by logs. A lot of weird math things that aren't real math things at all. Um, so this, when you're in this form, the inequality has to go in a certain order. So you've got to start with the x plus 3 in order to make sure that the inequality is pointing in the right direction. Okay, so the x plus 3 first, then is less than what? What's the exponential part on the other side? 3 to the third. So we start with that. And then there's the secondary piece that a lot of people were missing. We just talked about this up here. The inside of log functions have to be positive. We have a restricted domain. So this piece has to be positive. So we take this and make sure that it comes out greater than zero. Okay, remember when we read our inequalities backwards, we would read this as x plus three is greater than zero. So you set it up like this. Is that okay so far? Yeah. Okay, so I've got zero is less than x plus three is less than, I got a shocking number of nines for three cubes. 27, thank you. <laughs> And then what do I do here to get the x by itself? Subtract. subtract three. So I'm subtracting three from everything. So subtract three from zero and I get negative three. Subtract three here and the x is alone and then subtract three here. So that three piece inequality should be your final answer. Okay, you guys doing okay so far? This is from my domain restriction, knowing that this has to be positive. So we said that the x plus three has to be greater than zero. All right, let's take a look at number eight. Number eight was a disaster for many of you. Um, a lot of you guys made up your own properties. A lot of you turned division into division and turned squaring into squaring. Um, people, listen to me. If division just stayed as division, then we wouldn't have properties. Like we wouldn't have to give you specialized properties if division just stayed division. Division turns into what when we expand? Subtraction, Subtraction. good. like that. Okay, so we have separated out like that, like subtraction. And now these, so I don't want you plugging these into your calculator as logs at any point. I'm not testing your calculator's ability to simplify logs. They do a great job. I've tested them on it before. I'm testing you guys on your log properties. Okay, so we need to do something with this 9 and this 16 using these numbers that we have right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that would be 3 times 3, and then this would be 4 times 4. You could also use exponents and use your second or your third property as well. So I'm actually going to do one of each just to show you what that would look like. Um, so you could do 3 times 3 and 4 times 4. Or if you wanted, you could write them as 3 squared and 4 squared. So like I said, I'm going to show you one of each. This would be very abnormal of you to mix and match, but I want you to see how both properties work. Okay, so this one, if you have multiplication on the inside, it expands as what? Addition. So this becomes log base 5 of 3 plus log base 5 of 3. So you could do this one the same way. Like I said, I just wanted to show you the other property so you know how else you could do this. This is the third property. If you have an exponent, what can that exponent do? Go to the front. Turns into a coefficient. So we can move that 2 out front like that. So now you get yourself down to a point where you can use these values. Okay, so this is just 0.6826. So is this. And then this is 0.8614. So now when you get to this point, obviously you'd plug that into your calculator. I just don't want you using the log feature on your calculator for these. I want you doing it all by hand using the properties and these values. So this, if I'm remembering, I'm doing a lot of these off memory. So I think, is it 3575? 76. Okay. So there you go. So that's what your calculator would give you if you plug just this line right here in. Okay, so speaking of those properties, number nine also uses the properties. And a lot of people made this one more complicated than it needed to be as well. So on the left-hand side, the way that's written, it's kind of like doing the opposite of what we did with this. Like here we were expanding them. In number nine, we want to kind of condense them. So if I have two separate logs with addition in the middle, they combine as what operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. Good. So I would multiply the four times the two X like that. What if I had subtraction in the middle? It would be division. So it would be like 4 over 2x if it started as subtraction. So now this is just like the one on the previous page. They're both log base 5. I know it's an equation, so it's supposed to be equal. So it must mean that this is equal to this. Okay, we're not dividing by log. You can't divide by empty functions. can't divide by words. Or just recognizing that the insides must be equal in order for the equation to be valid. Okay, and then divide by 8. And we end up with 3. What's that? Times what? I did. 4 times 2x gives us this 8x right here. Okay, number 10. Number 10. So, for the most part, good things with number 10. What's the very first step with this? Take the log of both sides. Take the log of both sides because 6.5 and 200. Guys, I have five minutes to finish this. Stay with me. 6.5 and 200. They can't possibly be written as the same base. So this is what we dealt with in 7.6, is functions that can't possibly be written as the same base. So we do this. Take the log of both sides. It's a completely valid move. It's like adding one to both sides. As long as you do something to both sides, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So now we use the same property that I used up here with this two. Property number three for logs tells us if you have an exponent, it can move out front. So that's what I would do right here. I would take this exponent and move it out front. One quick comment, I had a lot of people that just tried to move the exponent out front without taking logs. Um, and I think when you guys are just so tied up and trying to do different math things, you don't realize how ridiculous that is. So let me show you. Let's say we had 3 to the 4th. What's 3 to the 4th? 81. What if I just decided I was just going to move that 4 out front? Is that the same? No, no. No, not the same. We can't just move exponents out front when logs aren't involved. Okay, so that's not, not a thing. With this, I'm trying to get x by itself. So since this is all multiplication, you could actually do just, you know, divide by this whole thing all at once. Because a lot of you probably, did you divide by the 6.5 and then divide that by 2? Yeah. You could do it kind of broken down, but you could also just divide it out all at once. Um, so everything, like these would cancel. And you should have 1.4153. Make sure you've actually gotten inequality written down. Um, otherwise, it's going to be partially wrong if you have an equation or if you just have the number. These ones I went through with you guys on Friday, too, reminding you that you needed to know how to do these. This is called the change of base formula, and it just goes like this. You take the common log of 13, divide it by the common log of 12, and then you can plug that into your calculator. I'm not interested in your calculator's ability to evaluate this. I know it can. I'm interested in your ability to remember the change of base formula. 
So this should end up being this. So you kind of have two parts. I wanna make sure you've got both of these pieces on your answer. Okay, and these are technically common logs. If you don't see the base, we know it's 10. All right, let's power through this back page. You guys doing okay? Yeah. These are quick on the back. These are both our seven, seven problems. So this one, this is just converting. Number 12 is just converting back and forth. So I would, just to make sure you recognize this and what its base is, I would do a rewrite like that. Anytime you see natural log, just recognizing that it's log base E. So this isn't the conversion, this is just rewriting. So when it says write an exponential equation, remember the way you should be reading these when you see them is the power on E that gives us 20 is X. Okay, the power on E that gives us 20 is X. So the power on E, that gives us 20 is x. That's all you're giving as your final answer for that problem. Just converting it into exponential form and just leaving it. All right. 13 is really similar, except your main technique is to convert back to log form instead of exponential form. What's the first step? Most of you guys got the first step. Subtract four, good. So we got this equals 17. So now, same idea here. Remember, if you're in exponential form, you've got e raised to the power of x equals 20. This reads the power on e that gives us 20 is x. So this is e to the x minus 2 power equals 17. To convert it into log form, we say the power on e that gives us 17 is x minus 2. Um, writing log e is weird. What do we normally see? Natural log of 17 equals x minus 2. Last step. Add two, good. Be really careful with this last step. Make sure you plug in natural log of 17 separately. You don't add two to the 17. It's not natural log of 19. It's the natural log of 17 and then separately plus two. Should give you 4.8332, I think. Okay, um, we clearly do not have time for the bonus, but are you guys clear on how the grades work for tomorrow, everything like that?